Hello everybody and welcome back to Guided Hacking. This is Fred HK and today we're going to be taking a look at an XLL document that is used to infect victims with Lockbit ransomware. We'll be taking a look at how to get the final payload from this XLL document and how this can easily be done. Let's get into it. So let's start with a bit of theory as to what an XLL document actually is. So an XLL document is an add-in file for Excel and it comes in the file extension of .xll but really it's a type of dynamic link library and this file can be opened only by Excel. These files are usually used to add some features into Excel and is used by companies all the time. Now let's look at the file that we'll be taking a look at today. Starting our analysis with the XLL document, we can see within Detector Easy that it is written in C, C++, and we can use a different tool called, called PE Studio, which is in the default installation of Flare VM. And this will be used to retrieve all of the information and resources that we need from this file to analyze it. So we're gonna take this tool and we're going to drop our XLL document into it. And we'll let this load. Once it's finished, I'll check back in and show you what we need to do next. So now that PE Studio is finished looking at the XLL document, we can see some information about it, such as the general information, such as the hashes and so on, some more indicators about it, and then some headers. And what we want to look at is the imports for the malware. And we can see quite a few imports that this XLL is using. And then also we can look at the exports of the malware, which is what Excel will be using. So we can see the DLL can unload now and so on. But if we look at the Excel, we can see Excel auto open, auto free, and a few other pieces of information. And these are usually indicators that the XLL may be malicious because of the open functionality being used to run code and so on. The next thing to always look at within an XLL document is that the final payload may be stored in the resources. And this is usually a good place to start looking for your actual final payload. And we can see three files here that have been marked as an executable. The first being these Excel DNA integration and Excel DNA loaders. You can see that they are marked by PE Studio as an executable with it being a 32-bit architecture. Usually the resources that start with Excel DNA aren't malicious and these are just part of the normal formatting for a XLL file. But then we see this ZFD06. Now this isn't something that is commonly found within an XLL document. So what we should do is we should check this out because it may be what we're looking for. I'm going to take the resource, I'm gonna go on instance and I'm gonna dump it. And we can just name this file. This will take a second, so I'll check back in once it's done. So now that the file has been dumped, let's check it out within Detector Easy. And we can see within Detector Easy that we've got a ConfuserX protected .NET sample. So this is very interesting because you would usually not find packed things within a XLL file. So clearly we may have something malicious here. Now, I think that unpacking ConfuserX is a bit outside of the scope of this video, but I'll quickly show you something that you may get lucky with, which is the DE4 dot cx modified version of d4 dot what this is is a modified version of d4 dot which is a deobfuscator and unpacker for dotnet samples it's a very good tool and i recommend you checking it out and this is a modified version of that that is made to handle vanilla confuser x confuser x is a commonly found protector and we can use this tool within this scenario to deobfuscate our sample but sometimes the actors may modify the binary and their copy of Confuser X so that some of these tools will not work. So we have our d4.cx here and we can just use it. I'll take my dumped binary and put it within the folder and then run d4. Dot against the file.dump. And we can see that it has detected Confuser X v1 and then cleaned it, renamed all the obfuscated symbols and saved it. So let's look at our file cleaned.dump and this is probably still a .NET binary, yep. So we will take a look at it within DNSpy. Looking at the binary within DNSpy, we can see some assembly information. They are pretending that this is a school LTD California, school LTD program and so on. This is just to help avoid detection. And we can go and look into the PE here. Now we have the actual code here that has been decompiled by D4 dot. And we'll also see in the CC tour, the entry module that 
this is all of the code that is responsible for deobfuscating on runtime the confuser X obfuscated sample. But we don't really need to concentrate on that because we're looking at the deobfuscated information and code. So here's all of the code that we want to check out. Looking through it, we see some interesting functions such as shell execute. We also see a from base64 string and then a few more pieces of information that look like they may be base64 encoded strings. So as always, when dealing with some strings like this, we'll use Cyberchef to decode the obfuscated strings. And I'll just go from base64 in our recipe here, and we can copy in some strings and see what they may be. So looking at the decoded strings, we can see that it is calling PowerShell using start bits transfer with a source and a destination. And we can see that it's concatenated a few other strings along with it. So string one, and string zero are passed to this function. And looking at where this function is called, we can see when highlighting it that it's called here. And we can see the parameter one is a exe name. And then the source of the bit transfer, which is simply just a downloading function built into PowerShell, will be gotten from this URL here. Now this URL is dead, but the resulting 123.exe is lock bit. And we can see that it's going to download this and execute it with shell execute which we saw above here and we can see the function of shell execute here so what it'll do it'll call this function to download and then call shell execute along with another file here which is a dot xlsx let's check that out now looking at where the xlsx may be it may be in this function here and we can see that it's getting the manifest resource stream from the binary so if we go into resources and we go here we can see that our xlsx file is embedded within the binary within the resources so we can save this and take a look at it later so to summarize what this will do is it will download and execute the lock bit sample from this transfer.sh host it'll then write the xlsx file onto disk and then open the xlsx file we also have one more base64 encoded string here let's check out what that is and we can see that it's the directory where these files will be written to so before we finish up here let's quickly look at the complete execution within a sandbox so here we can see the full execution of the xl document within the triage sandbox it has extracted the malware config and we can see the full PowerShell command here. So you can see how it's going to transfer from the URL, save it to the public directory and then execute it. Once the lock bit file is ran, then it will show the standard lock bit, your, all your files are encrypted and direct them towards the lock bit payment site. And then also the XLSX file that we saw is just a decoy file so that the victim sees something when they've downloaded these infected XLL files. So if we look within the replay monitor, we can see that the decoy file will open. And this is what we saw earlier as the XLSX here. And you can see that it is written in Korean. So it may be surmised within threat intelligence that they are targeting Korean users. I hope that this was a good, quick introduction to analyzing XLL documents and that you took something away from this. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, goodbye.